Hi, my name is Dave. I've uh, been building bolts and um, vertical bow shafts for a while now. And some of the common questions we get um, are on spine locating or indexing, or they see me mention um, we locate the first dynamic bend. Uh, just to go over that, so um, what we use is this jig from Fire Knock. And when we put the arrow on there, ideally we want about a quarter inch in from each of the um, ends of the shaft. And what we do is we introduce a weight to the shaft and we roll the shaft around. And when we're doing that, we can feel the weak spot or stiff spot, however you want to call it, but the different bending points, and there are different bending points, um, I do want to emphasize that, is when we roll the shaft, we're looking for the loosest one, not the tightest one. One will kind of feel like a pothole uh, that you can go in and out of. It kind of feels like a little jiggle and then you're out of it. Um, and the other one feels like a big dip in the road. Um, that's your dominant bend. So hopefully everybody can see this. Uh, what we're doing is when I roll the shaft and we introduce weight to it, we're feeling the which one we, we would go loose and then kind of hit a wall feels like a little bit of a wall or a hill and that would be one side we roll it back and we'd hit the other side um, we're looking for the one that has the most play in it so uh, you know it, most of the shafts most of them you'll get a secondary bend in there and this will be this little guy here and it'll that's the one that's just kind of offset on the shaft and you'll be able to feel that go in and out fast occasionally it's a rare occasion that we have a third bending point this is not common at least not on the shafts that i use um you have this small third bending point here um or flexing point uh so we make a determination to find the one with the big play area this is one of the reasons why we don't uh, float them in bathtubs or this would be really hard to pick up on say a ram spine tester because that's more or less scaled um, this spine this spine J enables us to let us feel which one that way we're not going off of a number because I can't personally determine if this is a weaker spine than over here if some would uh, grasp that or a, a more dominant bending point um, just going off of a number so we can accurately do it on here and fast um, as opposed to a person would have to go through a lot of um, bear shaft tuning um, perhaps to, to achieve um, similar or same goals that's what they're really going for is to try and get um, the shafts to all tune in the same with this process over here and we uh, build the arrows obviously nobody's going to pay me to bear shaft tune um, so I use this to get them to hopefully that same point um, and we can do these in minutes so I can do a dozen arrows in literally under five minutes so this is a big advantage for us as a pro shop this is a big advantage for us uh, for the customer um, that we're able to uh, send him out with a dozen shafts that are little to no calling it a shaft which means uh, odds are you really won't have to do any hardcore numbering of your shafts. They'll all shoot um, or all should shoot consistent um, even at extended distances. Um, so again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, try and answer them or PM me. Um, I do have a website that has a simple tech info page. It goes over some other stuff on vitallimits.com, www.vitallimits.com. Um, it goes over um, why the spine location is and predictability. Also for crossbow guys, especially ones who the crossbows have rails. Um, I'll go over in one other segment that I'll add into this uh, video because my my cell phone is not going to allow me to time span, <laughs> but um, this will this will be a continued version right after right after this. All right, thanks.